And we're almost done everyone, this is chapter 19 of my Fire Emblem 8 100% growth slow turn count playthrough. Uh, at first this looks just like a normal one turn clear as this chapter, which I think everyone who's dabbled into LTC knows by now. Uh, but then we're gonna deviate from the plan a little and warp Tana straight towards the secret shop. See the thing is I felt bad for Tana for not being able to promote uh, because Noel had to in order to four-turn chapter 18, so we're gonna sell off the member card and then give her a Elysian Whip to work with. Thanks Tana, now we're all broke and we can continue with our normal plan. Uh, this is pretty easy, as long as you can light up the place with the Torch Staff, you can then uh, dance for your boss killer, get the Dancer out of the way with the rescue, and warp into the fog to kill Reef. Pretty easy boss kill and a much better alternative to the other pick 3 condition, which is uh, wait around for what is it, like uh, 13 turns? <laughs> not gonna do that. So instead, we just trade warp around and get to business. Uh, Reeve does not get to it killed by Fidophne or Vanessa, so uh, I need a pierce or a crit of some kind, and what easier way to do that than to use Cormac's Killer Lance to do it? What is up, Reeve? Nice to meet you. Uh, this. You know, loses out on a bunch of treasure and experience, but who cares, right? We're so close to our goal right now. Uh, in fact, we're so close, we're just gonna do chapter 20 straight up after we get all of our juicy rewards, like Evaldi that we're never gonna use, Latona that we're never gonna use, Rescue Staff that we're never gonna use, no wait, not Rescue Staff, uh, 10,000 gold that we're never gonna use, Lightbrand we're never gonna use. I love useless rewards, man. Uh, let's see how useless they are in chapter 20. Uh, big, big seas map and pretty tough actually. This is one chapter where I think a turn save might be possible if you try really hard, uh, but it does take more warpers and rescuers than I have. Um, Salah, Natasha, maybe both have to be trained in order to one turn this chapter, I think. Or you need a Sage Archer. One of those. Um, but Sage Archer with A stabs. I don't have those, so I'm gonna go for a two turn. And I'm gonna promote Tana, because why not, you know? I could do it in preps, but this is way cooler. Just gonna promote her during the chapter because she doesn't have anything to do. And since we already broke Canon by promoting Vanessa to a Wyvern Knight, I decided let's make Tana a Falcon Knight. It doesn't really matter what she becomes anyway. And now she can use swords, yay. I love e-swords, so useful. And again, I'm gonna make Molda do the warping because Vanessa doesn't need a whole lot of distance. And, you know, maybe I need some more magic on my warpers. Something weird could happen. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> that's that's really the mantra for this playthrough or the last few chapters is I can mess around because it doesn't matter. The last few chapters are so easy to low turn count. It's poorly designed in a way. Uh, the positioning of Vanessa and Ephraim is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, you don't want Ephraim's way to be blocked at the start of enemy phase or the start of uh, turn 2 player phase. And I thought the best way to do it would be to give Vanessa a one range weapon that kills just about anything. Uh, in this case the Silver Lance. That way anyone that gets up close to her gets killed, and that way Ephraim's route will always be unimpeded towards the throne. Uh, it does put it, um, Vanessa in range of the boss, his name is Morva, he is a uh, Draco zombie. He uh, used to be a Manakeet, but he was transformed. Sad story, I know. Uh, he actually does 38 damage because his weapon pierces defense, so it's pretty dangerous. His hit rate is pretty good too, but as long as Vanessa doesn't get hit by anything else, it doesn't matter. And I was just trying out positions, and if she would have gotten killed, I would have found a more reliable way to do this. There's many more positions I could have tried. I could just equip both of them with the javelin, and I probably would have been fine. I just didn't want Reeve blocking Ephraim's way by standing right in front of Morva. It's funny how Reeve somehow survived Vanessa's assault in chapter 19. You wouldn't think that would be possible, but there it is. Uh, this chapter, I really hate playing it casually, by the way, because it's so big, there's so many enemies, and so much terrain too. And that part at the bottom, where the, the floating promoted eyeball is, that has shadow shot, you can't pass through it with normal movement units. It's pretty annoying. So yeah, um, let's burn some more ends with our freshly promoted Tana, and get ready for another nice animation with a pierce crit. Actually, we don't even need a pierce crit because Morva is not strong enough to withstand a Fidofnir crit since he is weak to it. All monsters are weak to divine weapons, so that makes it pretty easy to kill them in one hit as long as you have some crit on them. But yeah, that's chapter 20, completed in two turns, and chapter 19, completed in one turn. See you guys again for the final chapter.